So I've been watching this system for a while now. Um, several YouTubers have already reviewed it. And uh, I ordered one and I'm kind of like, why would I order one of these things? It's a Game Station, the Atari Game Station Pro by My Arcade or something like that. Um, but I got it because they were only 80 bucks. Now I had to actually order mine online because they didn't carry it in the store. Um, so I had to order it. Um, there's two Costco's probably within 30 miles of me, but neither of them carried it. So I ordered it. And for $80, I thought it was a really nice deal. Um, I've already got several of these uh, plug-in TV ready all-in-one units. Um, I ordered the uh, Atari 2600 Plus, so I'm on the waiting list for that. I pre-ordered that. And uh, this one came out and yeah, I, I bought it. Now, I remember when I first saw this, I thought, what an attractive little system. What I like about it is it doesn't look anything like an Atari uh, 2600. But if you look at the styling of the Atari 5200, there's some light styling cues that you'd find on a 5200. Um, you've got these, uh, these grates, these vents-like things. And there's like, it looks like a silver accent. Uh, we'll have to find out if this is metal or uh, just a sticker. I, I suspect it's just a sticker. But it just looks cool. And I like the, the LED light-ups on the sticks. I thought they looked pretty nice. Um, not sure about the shape of these sticks um, and how they're going to feel in the hand. It's worth a look. It has uh, several different game systems loaded into it. So it's got the Atari 2600, the Atari 5200, Atari 7800, and Atari Arcade. There's also some other games um, that are, have nothing to do with uh, Atari. I'm really not interested in those, but I might look them over anyhow. But uh, 200 games, probably 120 are Atari. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the box really quick. So nothing too fancy here. It includes the GameStation Pro 2 joysticks, which is really nice. Um, looks like a power cable, the HDMI cable, uh, uh, batteries, eight batteries, and a user guide. Um, love the uh, side art here. So we've actually got some wood grain with the Atari logo. Very nice. Uh, my arcade. Um, this is fantastic too. The red. This has kind of become a trademark of Atari things. The red. I think it goes back to the 2600 with the red label games. Um, this side over here. Uh, this is kind of nifty. Atari established uh, 1972. Um, and we've got the joystick. Yeah. Um, on the back. Well, it looks like a father and son enjoying their gaming. Um, here's a list of several of the games that are included. Features, we're looking at 200 plus video games built in. Console connects via HDMI to the TV. 2.4 gigahertz wireless joysticks with built-in paddles. Has game save options and dynamic RGB lights. That's gonna be kind of a cool little feature to see. But yeah, um, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, Atari Arcade, and the bonus games. The games that I'm really not all that interested in. So, um, I think what really drew me to this is just the overall aesthetics of it. Um, uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this box opened up now. That's enough talking. Let's take a look. Very nice. Very well presented. We've got uh, cool little uh, covers on here. Um, there's the Atari itself, our batteries, our joysticks. Very nice. Let's get this open. Okay, so um, plastic dust cover. Don't know what this is. Let's take a look. So I think we have a certificate of authenticity. Very interesting. Huh. What else is in here? Oh, so we got an empty box now, and we've got the GameStation Pro user guide. Should be pretty simple. I think we can figure this one out. Multiple languages. 
got our button locations, power, joysticks, uh, the various buttons on the arc, uh, joystick, and I, that's probably about it. Does some other things too, but I'll let you search out the other YouTubers for that. So now we'll go ahead and put our certificate authenticity back in there. Definitely going to keep this uh, together as a package. It's just kind of a really cool old system, or I should say it's a really cool new system. Now, let's take a look at the console. The console, very nice. It's got a little bit of heft to it. Um, mine already was off to the side, but there's the, the brushed aluminum finish, which I'm sure is uh, just a sticker on there, but it looks great. The feel is fantastic. I mean, this, this actually has a good quality feel to it. Very impressed. Um, so along the back, we've got our five volt in. Um, we got our HDMI. Here's a uh, reset. On this side, here's our micro SD card. And in the front, we've got a couple of USB C's, I believe, for the controllers. Now, I don't think these controllers will hook up with USB C, but I guess we'll find out. But I am very impressed with that. That's that feels fantastic. Down here, it looks like I've got my uh, USB uh, cable. So this is probably for power. So it's got the USB-C connector on it. So that's gonna be for my power. Uh, here's my HDMI cable and uh, batteries. Oh wow, this one got cracked. Wow, it's really thin. This is like super thin, that's too bad. Oh well. So here I've got my GameStation Pro set up next to my original Atari four port VCS or model 2600. Um, one big difference you'll notice right away other than size is um, they really share very, very little in common as far as design. Um, we've got the, like a bat handle joystick on the uh, GameStation Pro. And then of course the classic Atari 2600 joystick. Um, this joystick integrates, uh, it has three buttons. Um, and also a paddle controller, which is really nice. Where on the 2600, you just have a fire button. Now, a joystick that would be closer to the GameStation Pro would be like this old Wico bat handle joystick. Um, yeah, let's see what it has on the bottom. It's just the Wico Command Control. Um, they actually had several versions of this. Uh, one had a ball on it, they had the bat, and I don't remember, oh, one had like a pistol grip looking thing on it. Um, this is a really amazingly durable joystick, but it's hard to play with because the spring is so stiff on this. You really got to push on it and you just don't have a lot of leverage. So uh, I like the stick because um, it's tough, but I don't like the stick because it's hard to play with. Now I'm finding kind of um, like with this stick, this one, it kind of looks cheap. It kind of feels a little cheap, but surprisingly it's better than what I thought it was going to be. Um, I like the uh, the paddle controller that's built into it, which is very nice. Um, one thing I'm not too crazy about, I like the uh, two buttons, the A and the B, but I don't really like this little third button here because it's uh, the stick's just too small. Now, if they would have made it more like this size, then I think you would have had, then I think you would have had something that you could have played with. But on this one, eh, it doesn't really work. Uh, one thing I do like about this is if you set it down, it's quite easy to play with. It's uh, Real easy to push in any direction. Um, and it has like a, a ledge along here. So it'd be pretty easy to like um, screw a clip in here and just kind of bolt it down to a board or something if you wanted to have a controller that was uh, mounted. Um, now, gameplay, let's take a look. I've got the Atari 2600 here. I'm gonna mount this. I wanna compare a couple of games from the GameStation Pro to the uh, to the 2600 and let's see how they compare to each other. One thing I noticed with this system right away is I'm only getting sound out of the left channel. Uh, actually did some looking and found on the Atari forums that that is normal operation for this. Um, and the, the sound quality is pretty horrid too. So not very impressed with that. But let's look at a game. I wanna look at play something a little bit newer. So let's take a look at uh, Crystal Castles, kind of towards the tail end of uh, the uh, uh, Warner Communications era of Atari. So this one was released in 1983. 
and just uses a standard joystick controller. In the arcade, this, I believe, was a trackball game. Um, here you can see the pixels really well, the 2600. We've got a nice, clear, crisp display. Um, now, this game is hard to play uh, because just trying to grab the the dots that you're supposed to collect is a bit of a challenge. It's like the only way you can do it is going diagonally. But I love this game. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Even though it's difficult to play, it is a, it is a really good uh, 2600 game. And I don't know how many boards it has, but it's at least six because I've played the heck out of it. And I know I've gotten quite a few levels in. I've never found the end of it. So Atari did a good job with this one. And here we got our trees. Oh, geez. And our honey pot down here. Oh. All right. So let's take a look at the uh, 2600 version on a real authentic 2600 and see how that plays. All right. So first thing you'll notice is it's kind of, it's a little bit blurry. Um, not near as sharp. The pixels aren't as well defined. But graphically, it's the same. On my 2600, it's a little bit lower, but a lot of that could be the way the television. All right, so one thing to note is I can't hardly see the pellets in this game. Um, I know it'll play better on a standard television than this LCD screen. I think it's just the way that LCT, LCD is interpreting the graphics of this. So I can still see them, but barely. Um, the game plays exactly the same. I think I'm having a little bit easier time with the original Atari 2600 controllers over the uh, the control that came with the GameStation Pro. But uh, this looks, oh gosh, oh my, this looks terrible. You know, I should probably plug in an Atari that hasn't, doesn't have the, the mod on it and see if it's any different. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so I've set up my Vader 2600. This does not have the composite mod in it, and I actually prefer the picture of this. The only issue is you have to be able to tune to channel three. So let's go ahead and power this guy on and see how it looks in comparison. So again, it's, um, it's a little fuzzy. I've got a little bit of noise in it, but I can actually see the pixels better now than the composite mod. So let's go ahead and try a quick game. Okay, so now it's, it's a little easier to see the pellets. Not too shabby. My volume level is lower, but this is a, a pretty oops, pretty good gaming experience. So um, I had this particular Atari. I played uh, some Sega games on it. I've got a video of that. Um, but um, but yeah, I like my my Vader 2600. So if I get any more 2600s, it's doubtful that I will do any more composite video mods because. I don't think it's worth it. Although you will run into issues when the day comes that you can't tune anymore. So yeah, much, much easier to see what's going on here. Let's see if I can get that honey. There we go. Oh, and I got eaten by a tree. All right, so another game I wanted to take a look at was Breakout. So here we've got the authentic Atari paddle controller. And uh, I have like 15 of these controllers. <laughs> You can plug up to two of them on a 2600 for four players, and somehow I ended up getting a bunch of them, including some reproductions. So let's give this one a try and see how it plays in comparison. I don't like that sound. There we go. We'll play that. So I honestly think that the paddles on an authentic 2600 are better. Um, it still moves around a little funky, but that could be the paddle itself. But I get a lot more control on this. It's just a lot easier to play. Good fun. Let's all right. Let's play game five on the uh, Game Station Pro with double paddles and these little balls flopping around inside there. Oops. But all right. Yeah. The paddle controller is not as responsive as the uh, original 2600. It's uh feels a little floaty to me. 
but not bad. If you don't have a 2600 and you want to play paddle games, it's not a terrible experience. Just not quite as easy. Doesn't feel quite as intuitive. What I do like about this little paddle controller is that it fits on your joystick and you don't have to change out controllers, which is really nice. Now, if you are running uh, side loading ROMs and you try to side load a 2600 game, from what I understand, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, so the only paddle games that are gonna work are the ones that came, come built into the GameStation Pro. There we go, look at that, what a beast. Yeah, it hops around a bit, a little hard to control. All right, so let's try a little bit of Indy 500. Now, one thing I'm gonna, I noticed right away with this game is on the 2600, um, it, is a, it uses a driving controllers, which look just like our pedal controllers, except it's a different type of input. On this one, it can only go around like 360 degrees and it stops. On the uh, driver controller, it just spins. It continues to spin around and around and around. Different type of sensor that they use inside there. Now, the controller that comes with uh, the GameStation Pro, um, it also stops. It spins around about three, well, close to 360 degrees and stops. Not quite. Maybe 270 degrees. Um, but it's not used on this game. So, unfortunately, Indy 500 is a joystick game. Um, which makes it a little nasty to play. So, yeah. These little driving games, they're, they're a lot of fun, but they, they are hard to play with a joystick, especially one that's got such, you know, responsive, tight controls as this. But, yep, there we go. There's Indy 500. Let's take a look at it on the 2600. So here's my... Uh, Indy 500 and my Vader 2600, and you can see I've got the driving controller here. Um, this guy's a little bit different than the paddle controller as it continues to spin, and it's a different kind of like encoder thingy inside here than the uh, what the 2600 uses. So let's see if this still works. I'll try it out real quick. Sounds a little different. Oh yeah, she's working good. Um, oops. Now, I'm not used to playing this game. I haven't played it in a long time, but I can already tell that it's a little easier to control than, than like this than the joystick controller. Um, now, yeah, you have to really turn on it. There's, there's quite a bit of turning going on here. So I, I keep turning and turning and turning. Oh, hello. So yeah, not bad. Um, Indy 500 came packaged with these driver controllers. So the box was pretty big because it had to handle the cartridge as well as the uh, the controllers. Oops, there we go. Kind of a cool little game. It's got several different uh, options in it. I know there's like ice. Uh, here we got a different track. Oh, this is a one player. Uh, looks like it's a time. Oops, yep. You're supposed to try to get as many laps as you can in time. Oh, hello. Still hard to play. Not an easy game. Kind of reminds me of the uh, original Atari Sprint games. Um, have to see if uh, the, have to see if my arcade can, uh, my arcade come with any of the sprint action games. There's also um, like a snow in uh, inside here. Oh, here we go. This is you got to get the little dot. Lots of different game variety in this. So kind of fun. Let's see if I crash into the other car. Yeah, so you actually crash into each other. Oh, hello. Lots of fun. There's also ice. I don't, oh, here we go. This is ice. Oh, hello. Ah, jeez. Okay, so if you let off, it doesn't spin as much. This will take a little bit of getting used to. There we go. So that's Indy 500, lots of fun, lots of fun. So just paying attention to the 2600 games, if I was to look at these, I know that on my, in my actual Atari collection of games, I have tons of games I really enjoy playing. On this one, 
I'm not so sure how much I really enjoy many of the games in here. There's a ton of really great games that are missing, uh, but uh, Asteroids is a good game. Um, let's see here. Centipede's good. I like Centipede. Crystal Castles is good. Never really played Dark Chambers. That came out after I got out of the Atari. Um, Desert Falcon was a game that um, I thought was really cool in the 7800, but I've never played the 2600 version. A lot of these games are just really not all that exciting. Millipede's good. Um, the real sports games are decent. So the uh, Sword Quest series is kind of nice. It would be kind of fun to play these, although it doesn't come packaged with the manual, so I think it'd be difficult to understand exactly what you're supposed to do in the game. Video Pinball is a good game. Um, yeah, and Yard's Revenge. Um, other than that, there really aren't too many games, so... Uh, there aren't too many games I'd really be all that interested in playing. So if you're buying the um, Game Station Pro for the experience of playing 2600 games, unless you're side loading them, it's it's not really that great. Um, I'll do another video. I'll compare it to some of the uh, flashbacks and kind of compare games and kind of see how does the how does this weight to that. But um, honestly, uh, for the 2600 experience, I much prefer my original Atari 2600 uh, with the original controllers and a nice game collection um, to playing everything on a little emulator box. Uh, this just doesn't quite do it for me. Now I do have the 2600 Plus on pre-order and I'm hoping to get that soon. Um, so when I get that in, I'll review that. But uh, yeah, that's about it for now. I hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, if you did, uh, consider subscribing if you've already done so. It's free and easy to do. So I'll have another video coming out in a week or two. Until then, take care of yourself and goodbye. <laughs>